It was a cool autumn evening on the island of Sodor. The engines had been working hard all day and were looking forward to a good night's rest at the sheds. Everyone that was, except James. How long am I going to be kept waiting? At this rate, the sun will be down by the time we reach Edward's station. Don't worry, James. I'm sure we'll be back home in no time at all. Just have a little patience. Oh, I hope so. I hear there's going to be fog this evening. I shouldn't like to get lost in it, that's for sure. Unfortunately for James, the fog came down thick as he made his way down the line. It was so thick that James's lamp had a hard time shining through it. Stupid fog. Driver, I can't see a thing. Neither can I, but we'll have to carry on. Because the fog was so thick, Neither James nor his crew realised that an old set of points had redirected them onto an old line that ran deep into the woods. Oh bother! What stupid thing points are! I don't even recognise this line! Calm down James, we'll just go back and let the signalman know about the points. Good! Honestly, why doesn't the fat controller just get rid of these disused? This, this, used. James, is everything all right? <gasps> what kind of sick man would scrap an engine like that? N no idea. I, 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 I don't want to find out. Get, get me out of here. <laughs> At the sheds, all the other engines were settling in for the night. Except Thomas, who was worried about James. Where's James? He's usually here by now. I wouldn't worry too much about it, Thomas. He must have been held up by a signal. I'm sure he'll be here in no time at all. Ah! Speak of the devil. There you are, James. We were just talking about you. How was your day? James, are you all right? James said nothing as he backed down into his berth. He was unusually quiet and looked very pale. If I didn't know better, which is <laughs> quite rare, I'd say that poor little James has seen a ghost. <laughs> well, I, well, I did see something. <laughs> what is it? Oh, the scary Jack Frost come back to pay you a visit? I, uh, I saw a scrap engine. That's it. I understand it is rather distressing to see those poor souls, but you've seen them hundreds of times, James, and never once have you looked this disturbed. This one was... different. How so, James? Well, well, it was cut in half. 
clean through the middle without a fault at all. And its other half wasn't anywhere to be found. It, it wasn't like anything I'd ever seen before. All the other engines were very disturbed by what James had said. Even Gordon, who was now regretting teasing James. James, you must have seen a victim of the half engine. Are you serious right now, Thomas? I am in no mood for your teasing tonight. I'm not teasing. I know why that engine is like that. Go on then, Thomas. Tell us. Well, many years ago, before the Fat Controller's Railway was the Fat Controller's Railway, there were several engines that were brought in to help run and maintain the railway. I was one of these engines, along with several others. However, there was one that was different. Something horrible went wrong during her construction, for she only had half of her face, the other half being her smoke box door. We could hardly understand what she was trying to say. Maintenance on her was a nightmare to watch or listen to, and through all of this, she was in immense excruciating pain. Her cries and pleas for the pain to go away were so horrid that me and the other engines could hardly stomach it. But the nastiest of us, and even some of the crews, found it a great joke. This would all boil up inside of her, and one day, she changed for the worst. She became much more aggressive, snapping at anyone who she came across, even to those who felt pity for her. And to make things worse, at night, she travelled out of the sheds and down a heavily forested line. And when she returned, she would do nothing but talk about how we and the whole railway would perish in her garbled, barely identifiable speech. Some of us, myself included, believed she had been driven mad by all the pain she was enduring, seeking any way to be rid of her deformity. Eventually, the fat director had had enough. He ordered another engine to take her away to be cut up for scrap. At that same time, me and another engine were heading back home. As we made our way down the line, we could see smoke and the sounds of multiple fire engines. We rushed to see what had happened. And it's a sight I'll never forget. We never saw her again after that day, but we heard rumours from the workmen about noises in the forest on foggy nights. They all told us the same thing. It sounded like someone screaming in pain. And now, it seems her spirit is still around. Ha! <laughs> what rubbish! Do you all truly believe in little Thomas's story? James. What you saw may not have been as strange as you think. The fog could have simply been playing tricks on you. Gordon, I'm serious. The half engine is all too real. <laughs> of course she is. Just like every other tall tale we've heard here before. Honestly, when will you grow up and stop telling such ridiculous stories? And with that, Gordon backed down into his berth and went to sleep. The other engines followed suit, but some found it hard to sleep that night in fear that the half engine was around. The next night, Gordon was returning home with some empty pinches after his last train of the day. Once again, the fog came down, much thicker than the night before. But Gordon pressed on, 
And although he didn't believe in the half engine, Thomas's story still ran through his mind. What if Thomas was right? What if there really is a... Oh, stop! Get a hold of yourself, Gordon! That Thomas was just playing a trick. He's always been that way. Just then, he saw a red signal up ahead. Gordon slowly came to a stop. He was very confused, as were his crew. That's odd. No acid train should be passing through at this time. Do you think something's wrong? I think so. Uh, uh, grab some flashlights. I'll go and get the guard. Soon, Gordon's crew, along with the guard, were ready to go find out what the problem was. Gordon's driver spoke to him. We'll be gone for a little bit, Gordon. We're heading up to the nearest signal box to see what's wrong. You can't be serious! You expect me to sit here in the fog in the middle of the main line until you get back? Yes, that's what we'd expect you to do. Sorry, Gordon. But there could be danger ahead, and we wouldn't want you getting into an accident. We've left behind some red oil lamps, so you won't have to worry about anyone crashing into you. We'll try to be as quick as we can, okay? <sighs> Alright, but be quick about it. I just don't want to be left out in the cold any longer than I have to. As time passed, Gordon began to feel more and more uneasy. The fog gave everything a creepy look, and it didn't help that Thomas's story had crept back into his mind. Alright Gordon, take it easy, your crew will be back soon. You'll be on your way again, and before you know it, you'll be back in your nice warm- <laughs> ah! Stupid bird, go away! You're losing it, Gordon. The fog and that stupid story are just getting to your smoke box. There's no such thing as the half engine. There's no such thing as the half engine. There's no such. <laughs> Hello? Wh whoever that is, th this isn't funny. Knock it off! Are you all right? What happened? <laughs> Half engine. Thomas was right. <gasps> now, how on earth did this happen? Gordon, can you tell us? What's this about a half engine? It's nothing. N nothing at all. <sighs> all right, if you say so, we'll leave the coaches behind and phone for help at the next signal box. Gordon soon returned to the sheds, still shaken over what he had seen. He said nothing as he backed down into his berth. But Thomas could tell that something was wrong. You saw her, didn't you? Y yes, I, I did. <sighs> I did warn you, Gordon. 
I guess you can consider yourself lucky tonight. No one ever comes back from an encounter with her. Gordon stayed up for a while that night. He was still deeply disturbed over what he had seen. If there was one thing he could be thankful for, however, it would be that the half-engine didn't claim him as her newest victim.